Hey everyone, this is Mike Shaw with Planet for Photographers, and we want to take this opportunity to show you some of its more advanced time-lapse features. Specifically, you're going to see how to set up a time-lapse that not only includes the Milky Way rising over Half Dome in Yosemite National Park, but also several planets, the Moon, and finally the Sun. In doing so, you're going to see how to use several of the planet tools all in one project. Then, the beautiful thing is that you'll be able to see how to preview the whole sequence using the virtual viewfinder of Planet. This virtual viewfinder allows you to play a simulation of your time lapse that shows you the precise details of the foreground and the night sky events all together. This ability gives you the chance to make any fine adjustments that are necessary, so let's go ahead and get started. Now in this example, we're going to choose North Dome in Yosemite National Park as our shooting location. North Dome is easy to find by searching for it in the search window like this. And we'll choose the first option here. And then we'll set our camera location on it like this. Done. Let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. Uh, we'll set our scene location to be on Half Dome like this. And we're good with that. So as you can see, we have North Dome over here. Half Dome is over here. And we can see the distance between them using this tool here is 1.64 miles, so that's good. Now we want to open up our virtual viewfinder, see what's going on. Tap on this, that looks pretty good. Let's make sure we have a wide angle lens since that's what we want to use. That's all good. Okay, now in this time lapse, what we want to do is to capture the Milky Way. So to do so, we're going to use the Milky Way Seeker tool, which is this third purple button just here, using this option. And we can scrub back and forth using our timeline to watch the Milky Way galactic core as it rises over Half Dome, which is right just here like this. How cool is that? Okay, so now let's position the Milky Way right where we want to have it when the moon comes up, right just here, for example. And now we want to include the moon rising over Half Dome. And how do we do that out of all the possibilities in the future? Super simple. Look at this. First, we just tap right here on the results list, and you'll see a long list of possibilities over the next year. But in this example, as you know, we only want those dates that have the, also has the moon rising in the same direction as the Milky Way Center. So to filter these dates out, look at how easy it is. We tap on this option here. And we also choose the crescent moon options here and here. And look, that just leaves us with two results. March 30th and April 27th, 2019. How great is that? So let's go ahead and look at the first one on March 30th and see how things look. All right, so now you can see the moon rising over Half Dome just as we scrub along the timeline. And in this instance, we can also go further and you can have Venus, which would be very noticeable, and uh, continue on and we finally have the sun. This is absolutely perfect and just what we want. So now let's go back to our time-lapse tool and set this up. So in our time-lapse tool, we're going to start by clearing all the settings by tapping on these blue icons and selecting clear settings. We do this for both the start and the end. And then we're going to start by scrubbing along the timeline until we have a nicely positioned Milky Way like this, just below Half Dome, ready to rise. And so we're going to press on the blue icons next to the start time, and we're going to choose Use Current Time as the starting time. Okay, so we're all set there. And now we can advance the time, scrubbing along the timeline, until the sun just peaks over the horizon like this. And we want this to be the ending time by pressing on the blue icons next to the end time display and select Use Current Time as Ending Time. So now let's set up the next rest of the time lapse parameters. In this example, what we want to do is to choose set a 30 second interval because the night sky moves relatively slowly. So to do that, we're going to tap on the interval display, and we'll choose 30 seconds, and we're done. And now you can see the total duration of the time lapse right just here, which is about five and a half hours, and that'll give us a total clip length of right around 20 seconds. And you can see the total number of shots that you're going to take right just here. And in fact, if you tap on this number right here, you can get this really nice uh, pop-up with uh, details of the time lapse that you can review and double check to make sure everything's good. Okay, all right, now let's watch the simulation now in our virtual viewfinder. So we're going to tap on this play button. Have the Milky Way rising. Here comes Saturn. 
and the moon, Venus, and finally, here comes the sun. How great is that? And as you can see, in every stage of your time lapse, there's something interesting going on, whether it's the Milky Way, a planet, the moon, or the sun, there's always something that's changing. Okay, so now let's go one step further and add motion. For example, head rotation or panning. We can go back to the beginning of our time lapse by long pressing on the start time to set the current time to the beginning like this. And this is a good starting camera angle, so we want to start our time lapse with all of these settings. To do so, we simply tap on these blue icons next to the start time display and select set current settings as the starting settings. And now what we want to do is we want to change our ending azimuth. We want to leave the lens focal length to be the same. And so to change the azimuth, we simply adjust the view by dragging on it like this. And what this does is it really changes the viewer's focal point of the composition. And what we really want to do is to put the rising sun at the center of our composition. So we do that like this. Then we go up to the blue icons by the end of the time display. We long press on them and choose set current settings as the ending settings and set the current time as the ending time as well. So now let's preview our time lapse by tapping on the play button. You can see that time is changing. Also the azimuth is changing as well. And this simulates the head rotation as the camera pans across the landscape. And finally down here you can see the sun coming up and that puts the sun right in the center of the frame. Isn't that just fantastic? So this is quite a complex project and yet Planet makes it simple to set up where we can predefine everything, the starting azimuth, the ending azimuth, and even the starting and ending elevation angle if we need it. We can also see the sun and the moon and the planets moving through the scene to make sure they look just how we want them to. And that's the complete process. The only thing remaining is to head out to North Dome on the right date and capture all the image needed to show you how precise the simulation actually is. So until next time, this is Mike Shaw saying thanks for watching and the best of luck with your planning with Planet.